everyone. I've come to Woonwell Cemetery. Now, Woonwell's not too far from where I live. And uh, a chap who watches the channel, I won't mention his name because it's not fair, I didn't ask if I could. But he said, uh, give this place a whirl. And I said I didn't know it were here, but you know what, I did. Because when I was driving up, I knew exactly where it was. But anyway, it's absolutely pouring down today. There's a, quite a few interesting graves in here. Um, there's a society that run it. But I thought they were on this list. It's called the Friends of Wingwell Cemetery. And they've got a website and they've put a lot of information up about a few stones. But apparently there's one of the Bus Busby Babes is buried in here. And there's a statue, uh, something to do with a gravestone. It, it doesn't go into detail on the website, but the gravestone went missing a few years back, I think. This is on here, look. Friends of Woonwell. Anyhow, um, I haven't got any of the Friends of Woonwell's information, so as usual, we're just going to see what we can find. Do a bit of digging. See if we get lucky finding some interesting histories. And uh, it'll give me an opportunity to stretch my legs because I've literally not moved for like the last, well, yeah, I've been out and about, Anna, but like, I just feel like I'm not doing anything. So let's just have a bit of a walk. I might just do this unedited, but then that might get really boring because you've got to wait for me to get to a grave. So I think, no, I think we'll, uh, we'll do the usual edits and we're going to start with this big grave here. One thing I did notice yesterday when I did my uh, Chatterton, Chatterton video, oh, dead, have you seen that squirrel? I'm trying to show you that squirrel. Can you see him? He's in like the hollow of that tree. <laughs> but one of the things I did notice, I was right close to graves. So you couldn't actually see them. So I'm bearing that in mind today and I'm going to stand back. Um, I was trying to show you the writing, but in doing so, I think it just made it like... Anyway, this is an interesting stone. It's in loving memory of Jane, the beloved wife of Frederick Ward. Now, I'll have to go closer because I can't see the date she died. I think she died in 1932, yeah. And Frederick uh, Ward, he died in 1934. It doesn't look like anyone's put any flowers on at any point. In the last few years, let's take a closer look. It's a door with a key. Oh, look, can you see that? How interesting. I think it's supposed to be the gate to heaven or something. I like that grave. I think that's absolutely splendid. I'll tell you one of the things I noticed yesterday. I was, um, when I was walking around, I saw the grave of John Bunting. I think I might have mentioned him. Did I mention him? I don't know if I did. Anyway. Um, it's all overgrown, so I'm going to take it upon myself next time we're going to Chadderton Cemetery to cut the bush, the bush back and hope that I don't get sued. Because <laughs> you can't read it, you can't read it, you don't know it's him. And he's actually a very important, you know, um, Oldham character, big, big part of Oldham's history. I was reading about him last night and I thought, you know what, I'm definitely going to go and cut the grave back, so hopefully I don't get arrested. Anyway, this is an interesting one. This is of Gertrude, the dearly beloved wife of George E. Barlow of Bolton-on-Dern. Never heard of that. The daughter of the late Thomas and James Crosley of Woonwell, Maine. She died 27th of May, 1939. She's only 56. Also of the above name George Barlow, he died in 1955. It's very nice, that. And, uh... In true and loving memory of Archer Frederick. Archer Frederick Phoenix of Middlewood, Sheffield. I wonder what those people did. It's a big monument. So, yeah, there's a white cross down there that I want to go and look at. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing anyhow. And um, I'm just going to do it. Because you can't read the stone. What's the point in having a stone? A beautiful one as well, if you can't bloody read it. So, one thing I am noticing about this place, and this is Woonwell, I think they call it the General Cemetery. Um, it's not like Chariton where you've got the massive major, major monuments, and that's probably because, um, you know, the people that, you know, that, that sort of built Barnsley and stuff like that, I think they're buried in like churchyards and what have you. Oh, look at this. Sydney Haler, RN, killed in action. 
November 1945. Poor get. Let's have a look round here. Some nice houses here, everyone, isn't it? Look. Nice old houses. That's beautiful over there, 99. Right, let's have a look at these. I wonder what we're going to find today. I mean, exciting graves we're going to find. Now, this looks really interesting. Well, this guy was a JP. So this is Edward Tune, JP, President of the Barnsley British Cooperative Society, who passed away December 13th, 1932, in his 70th year. His life remembered, his memory honoured. Also, his wife, Edith Tune. Wonder what he did in life. And then we've got Edward Crowther, died 22nd of January. You know what I'm noticing about this place? It's it's relatively new. Um, for me, they're, they're all modernish graves. But this is one I wanted to look at. Because I think this is really interesting. Look at this. So this is the grave of Roy Kilner. Yorkshire and England, oh my god, Yorkshire and England cricketer. Wow, dearly beloved memory of Roy Kilner, Yorkshire and England critica, cr cr cricketer, and beloved husband of Anne Kilner, he died in 1928. Fabulous. So he was a cricketer. England, no less. Mm. Well, let's go down here. There's an another whopping monument down here. Let's go to this one. That cricket is going to be interesting, I think. It is turning into an unedited one, this, isn't it? And you know what we've got down here, everyone? We've got a ruins of a church. Let's go to it. You know what? Considering it's raining, I've not got my odd ups, I think. And we'll do me a letter anyway. Um, but considering it's raining, it's not, not bad at all. So this is a very, very old chapel and there's there's like a little i don't know if you can see that on the camera you know what this camera as well i might change it i might get another one um because it's very good this camera but it's not like the other one where i could zoom in and this looks like a it's a garden of remembrance everybody Seen anything like this before? This is a really old chapel. Look, in keeping with um, the channel, I don't really like focus on modernish graves. And I think looking at this, as I can see, these are people of relatively recently, so I'm not gonna focus on them. There's a few. Benches. How lovely is this? Look at that gate. South 18 something it's called. Look at that old turret there. Yeah, considering it's raining, it's not really... Oh, look at that floor. Wow. There's another... Um... Oh, this is the... South 1867 Chapel. Look, someone's put like a... That's fabulous, that, isn't it? And there's another one over there. Oh, we're getting into the thick of it now, everyone, look. This is where all the big ones are. I mean, it makes sense. It's going to have a lot of old graves. It's, it opened in 1868, didn't it? According to that thing. And this is a beautiful grave under this absolutely stunning tree. And it's affectionate remembrance of John Furfleet of Jump. He died at 62 in 1874. And this draws me eye. And look at this beautiful, absolutely beautiful railing. Look at that. Let's get close in so you can have a look. Look at the detail on the ironwork, all by hand, probably by the local blacksmith. 
Look at this. Look at that. I love stuff like this, everyone. You know I do. But let's have a look round here. I think the ivy's covered it, so I'm not even going to be able to see who's in the grave. Bloody as and all. It's, a, it's a into the um, stone. I don't want to pull at it because um might damage the stone and I definitely don't want to do that. I think we'll just have a quick look at this. We've got this church here. Again, another one that's... I don't know if it opens. I suspect not. Again, it's got the winged... Um, why am I walking over the grass when there's a perfectly decent path here? Um, the North 1867 Chapel. So again, I don't think this one's work working either. But it looks in a lot better condition than that one. Look at this beautiful door. I'm not talking about the iron railings, I'm talking about the one behind it. Look at that. That was grand as some places. Funded by the generous donation from Wombwell Darts League. Aw, how nice. In loving memory of the Hoyland family, these gates were made and erected by Peter Hoyland. How lovely. This graveyard is full of um, squirrels. Stones collapse there. <laughs> you heard them birds? Do make me laugh. Look at this big walking tree here. How beautiful is that? Right, let's get some grave let's have a look at some graves and see what we can find. We've got this particular grave here which's been absolutely uprooted by this tree. It's the grave of Rebecca, the beloved wife of George Brunt. She died 1917. George is also in there. He died 1932, I think it says. I don't know what type of tree this is. Is it an oak tree? I don't think it's an oak tree. Look <laughs> at them birds. I used to think they were rarels, but they're not. They're the pigeons, aren't they? Here we go. Walter Charles, the beloved son of Sarah George Major and Sarah Jane Hitchin, died the 7th of February 1920, age 24, also Ezra Major. What a wonderful name. Their son who fell in action in France, April 28, 1917, age 27. Their memory like the ivy clings. Also the above name, George Major Hitchin. I wonder if the son is actually in there or whether he's still in France. Some people didn't make it home, did they? Where's that bloody... Oh, she's up there. Right, let's have a walk up here. See what we can see, aren't we? So, yeah, um, I just wanted to get out and just have a look round and see what's what. I don't know what them people are staring at me for, but they are, it's a bit weird. <laughs> Probably thinking, what's that weirdo doing there with the camera? <laughs> right, I think what we're going to do... Look at that poor get. He's in a grave on his own, John Cothard. 1880. This is interesting, look at this one. In loving Murray of Murray, the beloved wife of William Laycock of Woonwell, late of Thur Thurgo, Thurgoland, 72, thy will be done. So I imagine the husband's in this side. Yeah, William Laycock died 1892, age 78. His end was peace. 
you know, I always, and I was thinking this yesterday when I've, I was editing the uh, Orch Haddon video. Can you imagine what most of these people would think if, um, if they could see now what we do with, you know, photographing, like just what this channel does, like bringing back the stories. I'd probably get a, a rollick, rollicking off a few of them for getting, <laughs> for getting things wrong or telling things that I probably shouldn't. But, uh, so this must be the statue here, and it definitely is. I don't know the story behind it. But from what I can gather off the website, it doesn't give you much away, but it says that it went missing. There was a story to it. So I don't know if someone whipped it a few years ago and then they found it. But they also said that this lady has an interesting story. So I'll have to just try and find it myself. Oh, yeah. It says here, the fallen angel lost for a while till found and restored by the friends of Wilmot Serity was related to a local resident known to the group. Oh, Annie Wild. You heard that? Annie Wild of Wombwell. She died in 1915, age 51. Forget you not. We never will. We loved you then. We love you still. Your memory is as fresh today as in the hour you passed away. Oh. Seeing that crow over there. Watch it. They're having a fight. No wonder there's a load of noise. I want to get to that grave over there. Look at that crow there. Can you see it? Hey, look at hey, look at this. This one here. Jesus, shut up. In loving memory of Rifleman Stanley Barraclough, 8th Battalion Rifle Brigade, the dearly beloved son of Edwin and Eliza Barraclough. Now, he died on the 7th of January 1918 from the effects of gas received in action. Oh, I was only 20. Also, Kenneth, who died August 1908, age 11 weeks. Also, the above named Edwin Barraclough. He died in... 1930. Also, Eliza, she died in 1951. I wonder which battle that was. I'm going to try and find out. Poor Stanley. Yes, I want to look at this grave because this is very, 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 very interesting. Look at the design on this one, everybody. So let's read it. To the memory of Frederick Crossley Wilson, F-I-B-D. I don't know what F-I-B-D stands for, but I'll be putting it in because I'll find out. The beloved husband of Florence Wilson, born May 15th, 1868, died 1928. Also the above dearly beloved wife, Florence. Now, he was a mason. Do you see it? Do you see the symbol? You get that on a lot of graves where people have been masons. Um, and sometimes what you find, I think, is that if someone hasn't been extremely wealthy, the masons will club together and and make sure that someone's got to be fitting. What the hell is going on? Ridiculous noise they're making. Anyway, uh, how do we get round here now? Let's go this way. They're going absolutely mad. Look at them. Maybe they want me to move. Maybe that's what the problem is. Oh, anyway, I've moved. So, we're nearly done in here. Because that noise is driving me mad. <laughs> I, like, I like the sound of birds, but they're driving me absolutely bloody mad. Yeah, he's not, he's not well in that. So, this is where we've just come from. And this is where we're going. We're going to have another look. We're going to have a look over here. 
and then we're going to make our way out. I think after here I'm going to go to Tesco's. Don't know what for. Probably just a bit of a walk around. This is beautiful, isn't it, everyone? This is beautiful. Look at this tree-lined path. Stunning. Um, yeah, so I was saying, you probably noticed that um, sometimes my me, me screen's off. And genuinely, I think it moves on its own because I'll look at it and it'll be all right. And then the next breath, it'll move up. I'm going to do a bit of a... See, like now, that's moving up, in it? Or is it not? It might just be my eyesight. Um, so I think I'm going to look into getting another camera. Um, I'll go back to using the other one. But I really like this one because it's nice and compact. I could just do it, like, just keep me out of the screen, can I mean, that would be the easier thing to do. Anyway, what I'm surprised that with some of these stones in here today is fairly, um, the ones that are like even from the late 1800s, some of them look fairly modern to me. We're getting into um, the uh, more modern a bit now. I wanted to walk through here because I just want to see if the grave of the Busby Babe chap jumps out. If not, then I'll get it next time. But I thought it might mention it, you know, with him being a Man United player. And with that being such an event, you would have thought it would have made his tombstone. <sighs> anyway, everyone, I think I'm going to make my way back up out of that gate up there. Um, I think that's enough for today. Plenty to go at. Uh, let's see who we can find. That cricket is interesting. Um, what else did I say? What else was I going to say? There was something really important that I wanted to tell you. And I can't bloody remember what it was now. So I'll do a live on it when I remember. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed Wound Well. And uh, I'll uh, definitely see you in the next one.